Hi, I'm Lulu and welcome to Lulu's Way. I'm glad you're here. So I picked up my new glasses. I just came in from outside, so that's why they're, they're tinted. They just automatically turn to sunglasses when I go outside, which is very, very, very handy. Soon enough, they'll be clear glass again. So today I'm going to uh, show you three things I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna cook mixed grains, I'm going to show you how I make the mixed grains that I that I enjoy. I'm going to make bok choy and kale both in the instant pot. And I'm going to make a video of those three things. So come and join me in my itty bitty kitchenette. I'll do in the intro. Welcome to my kitchen. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the bok choy in the instant pot. So I'm going to cut the ends off here like this and then just stand them right up in there. I rinse these. I rinse these good. So now, it looks like these are too tall for it, but you know, it's really not. And I'm going to show you how. I'm going to put some water in the bottom. And you know, this is all going to shrink when it's cooked, so it's just going to go right down as soon as, the, as soon as it starts to heat up. So I just kind of stuffed it in there. I'm going to do pressure cook. I'm going to put it on zero minutes, and I'm going to let her go. Those three beeps means it's starting to build pressure. Once it reaches pressure, it will beep again. That means it's reached pressure and now it's going to cook according to the time you set, which for us is zero. So right when it beeps, I know it's done. And I'm going to release the pressure instantly and then it's finished. So these little ends right here of the bok choy, okay? Uh, a subscriber wrote to me because she saw bok choy in my uh, grocery order when I did that grocery haul. And she said, um, she said, when you cut the ends off the bok choy, put them in some dirt and be amazed. So, I got myself a pot of dirt. I'm gonna put these in like this, bottoms down. She said with the top still peeking out. And I'm gonna put that out in the sun and I'm gonna see what happens. I think the same thing happens like with, with the green onions. They'll just, it will just grow heads, heads of bok choy. That's what I think is gonna happen. So, uh, I'll keep you updated on that. So I'm not, I'm going to, this needs to be watered really good, but I'm going to water it outside because um, there's drainage holes in the bottom of this and I don't want it to drain in the house. So I'll keep you posted on this. Okay, this is going to go sit right out in the gardens. So now what I'm going to make is my mixed grains. So I, 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 many of you have asked me how I do the mixed grains and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. So I get, a baking dish because I bake my rice because it comes out perfect, absolutely perfect. So right here, I have some white basmati rice. Right here, I have quinoa. And right here, I have wild rice. And right here, I have Farrow. So this is the what I do. I get a cup measurement. I open up the farrow and I get this, just a tablespoon, uh, a re regular 
silverware tablespoon and I do one, two. Then I get the wild rice and I do one, two. Then I do the quinoa. And I do one, two. Then I get the white basmati rice and fill it to the top. There you go. Then I get my little colander. I dump this in here and I rinse it really well. Okay, that's good enough. Then I get my baking dish and I dump it in. I add a little salt, but that's optional. Then I get a cup of water. And then I get a half a cup of water. And that's it. Then I put it in my little toaster oven like this. You can I you can cover it with tin foil, but what I do is to save myself a piece of tin foil, I take this little baking dish and cover it with that. I put it on bake for 400 start. And when I hit start, it's always automatically 30 minutes. So that's 30 minutes. It's going to bake for 30 minutes and then it's going to sit in the residual heat for 15 minutes and it is done perfect. You can come back for that. <laughs> no. oh, okay, that means it's reached pressure. It's on zero minutes right here. This is seal. That's vent. I'm going to vent. I'm going to hit this. There you go. There's the steam coming up. Very, very safe. Very efficient way to cook. Just wait till all the steam is released. And the way you know the steam is released is this little button right here. This little silver button will go down. Right now it's up. And when that goes down, it means that the steam is all released. It's down right there. There we go. Okay, ready? Now we're going to open her up. And I'm going to put some paper towels on the bottom of this right here, just to, just to absorb some of the, the water from steaming. Look at that. Perfectly, perfectly cooked bok choy. Look. Look at that. Now that will be extremely delicious. That would be good with a little bit of soy sauce on it. Um, some of that liquid brags if you like that instead. Um, just delish. So we're going to put this over here to cool like that. And now this is ready for the kale. Now this water, the water is still in there from the uh, previous, previous cooking. And it looks like it's just plenty. So I'm not going to add any more water. So back in the day when I first got my instant pot, I used to do this big, huge bag in two, two cooking sessions in this because it just seemed like only half of this fit. But 
I've learned, I've since learned that I can stuff this whole thing in there right to the top. Now, some things that are right to the top, you're going to have a disaster because, uh, especially if it's liquid, um, or if it's anything that doesn't shrink when it cooks, if it stays the same size and it's right up to the top, it's not good. You're going to have a mess. Um, it doesn't explode or anything. It just, when the steam comes out, sometimes some of the food liquid comes out, out in the steam, but this shrinks when it cooks. So by the time it's cooked, it takes up a lot less space. So I'm going to show you how I stuff this in here. So this is a 12 ounce bag of kale. So I'm just going to take handfuls. So the way I used to do it was like this. See, it's already full and I've only used like half the bag. So now I just push and I push. push. And it does all fit. So now, uh, pressure cook, zero minutes. You don't have to, there's no start button. You just set the timer and it just, after a few seconds, it will start to beep and it's like, okay, this is what you, yep, there you go. Now the pressure is going to build and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the kale as I did for that. I'm going to release the pressure when that little thingy goes down. Grains are still in the oven. This is going, that's cooling and we're good for the moment. There it goes. It has reached pressure. Now I will release the pressure. cancel. There we go. I love me some kale. Delish. I'm going to see if I can make room for the kale right in here. See, this is, this is soaking this uh, paper towel. If I put everything over to the side like this. Oh, that smells so good. It smells delish. And I'm going to put some paper towel down on this side. So while I have this all out, I'm going to get this ready for my, for my lunch. So I'm going to weigh out, weigh out 16 ounces. Then it will all definitely fit in this container. Okay. The, the button went down. I'm going to open this up, put this on the side like that. There we go. I just ordered some kale seeds from my favorite place to order seeds from. And when they come, I'm going to do a bed of kale too. I just ran out of kale seeds. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do, bring out 16 ounces of veg. That's perfect. And yes, that's how much I'm going to eat. I eat a lot of vegetables. So this looks like I have enough 
for another meal, but it, not enough for a complete other meal. But I'll just add something else to it. I have other things to cook. So we'll let that cool over there. And then I'm going to add salt and pepper. I'm going to add some avocado oil. Half an ounce. I know that looks like an, a lot of oil. That's because it is. It's a lot. Makes it delicious. Gives me some calories. I'm going to open this container of cooked chicken. Looks like there's a teeny bit of fish left from the fish. So I'll put the fish in and then the chicken. That's it right there. And I have my Japanese sweet potato, also four ounces. That's it right there. These kitchen shears are the best. Just cut everything with scissors. Now I'm going to take a, a plate. I'm going to put it right on top. And this is my lunch for later. Like about an hour from now. The only thing we're waiting on is the grains, and I'll be back for that. Okay, so now my, my grains are ready. Check it out. So I'm gonna take the, um, the pan off the top. Take out my dish, and there it is. So if you look right here, look at this. Look at how fluffy it is. It's all separate. It's not sticky. It's not all stuck together. And it's the four grains. And you know, having the four different grains in there is, you know, there's something healthy about it because it's it is does provide variety. But I think it just looks nicer. Like to have all those little black bits in it, the little black pieces of white rice, and it just uh, it just makes it look look more interesting on the plate. I like it, and like I said, I make uh, omelets with this in the morning. So I just put four ounces of this in a in a pan, and I just sizzle it till it heats up, and then I uh, put my two eggs in it, and I make the omelet. Put the chives on it from my garden. It's a really good breakfast. So that to me is the easiest way to cook grains. Um, you can make this with any combination of grains that you like, or you can make it with just, I mean, sometimes I do it with just rice, just plain rice. So I'm gonna let that cool, put that in the fridge. I think my, uh, my greens here have cooled. So I'm gonna cover those and stick those in the fridge now. Got my lunch ready for me in a very short time. 
I might just throw that in the oven just to heat it up a teeny bit. And uh, that's my little cooking session for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good ideas and bye for now.